So a fun fact about myself, I literally just woke up 20 minutes ago. I somehow in my sleep turned off my alarm and then like panicked in my dream and I was like, oh my God, I have to get up to call Tori to shoot the podcast. So I literally am fresh out of bed. I just changed my clothes. Wow. That is my life, right? Like that, makes sense. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I've been up for hours. I figured you would be. I didn't <laughs> doubt it. And on that, that note, does make sense. let's roll the intro. Well, welcome back to Potty back Talk. Back to Potty Talk, the, the podcast, podcast where we should, where we should talk, talk ourselves. ourselves. I'm Jack. And I'm Tor. <laughs> Do we have a leg going on here? No, I can hear you perfectly. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, Do you have a leg? I felt like you didn't jump in properly. Oh, no, see, I felt like you were behind, but that could just be the internet. We're on FaceTime right now. Uh, this is our quarantine podcast, so welcome to this very special episode, everyone. This is insane. I can't believe we're doing a quarantine podcast. This just goes to show how much the world is ending. Yeah, so who knows even, I mean, hopefully things don't get worse but they're expected to right now when we're filming this it's wednesday march 18th and currently toronto is pretty much on full lockdown here in ontario canada and um only essential things like grocery stores and um, pharmacies are open so obviously our podcast studio isn't open obviously me and tori can't really even see each other because we've been practicing our social distancing so we were kind of brainstorming how do we film the pod do we just put it on hiatus do we i, I don't know whatever their option was so and then, far, we've never done a hiatus, so that felt wrong. Yeah, we've never done like a mid-season hiatus, so that didn't feel right. We didn't want to stop it. And then, I don't know about you, Tor, I'd be curious to hear, but I was asking some of my like followers, because part of me, in regards to YouTube and the podcast, I was like, yeah. is it just super insensitive to just keep posting and be like, makeup tutorial, and like not even acknowledge it and just kind of pretend that everything's normal, when everything clearly isn't. Everyone is, you know, going right. through this huge pandemic, so... I didn't really know what I wanted like my move to be, but I was talking to my audience on Instagram and everyone seemed to be saying, hey, we're in quarantine, we're bored as hell, we can't watch any more Netflix, like I'd appreciate yeah. it if you just kept posting like normal, it's a sense of, you know, entertainment, escape, maybe like one laugh during this weird time, so I'm like, you know what, that's true, and, and I'm lucky, like we can do our jobs kind of from home and I can just keep on making videos. So I decided that I think it's best to just keep posting, acknowledge it, and of course, like, send condolences or, you know, not condolences, but literally to everyone that's lost their, their freedom and, you know, jobs or whatever it is right now. But I think this is the best way. What do you think, Tor? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I think that it goes twofold. I think, here's my take on it. I don't like when uneducated speak on uneducated people speak on it. Like that is starting to really bug me. Like watching people, basic like basically like not understand the severity of the virus. And there's a lot of people that have and and I have to say the people with quite large audiences have been phenomenal. I was say, um, people have been pretty like I feel like influencers or whatever like people have been pretty vocal which i'm impressed with yeah and i really appreciate that and i think if you have an audience at that level like i got a lot of dms after i did a story yesterday that toronto was on lockdown and people didn't even know that like so many people dm me saying wait really and i said yeah did you not watch the doug ford announcement and i get it like people don't care to get involved in the politics of it all but i think at this stage we kind of have to be as in as informed as we possibly can yeah. um and whether that means fine someone watching my story and figuring it out that's great at least you still are aware but um i don't know i i guess my my perspective is if if you're not getting information from the right sources and you're just sort of spitting out random opinions on it that I don't really love. Yeah, um, I, I think to a degree it's like you, especially if you do have more of an audience, there is a sense of responsibility, which whether you like it or not, there is. So I think, you know, you do have a personal and like social obligation to be informed or be spreading, like don't, or to, to prevent spread of misinformation but totally um, i do think though there it does have to be and, and this isn't to you it's more towards other people that i've seen online a sense of just like gentleness and kindness and that we're all kind of learning and going through this together because i think with this situation news is coming out so rapidly there's you know yeah. fake news there's new news every five minutes like i think it was what a week ago like within like 30 minutes we found out tom hanks had it we found out 
Italy was like fully on, like all these crazy things came out within 30 minutes that the top five stories couldn't even make like one headline, you know? So there yeah. needs to be a sense of people, like of compassion and just understanding if someone isn't educated, instead of just being like, you idiot, get in the house, you troll. Like, it's like, well, just maybe explain, cause maybe someone literally doesn't know. And I know that seems kind of crazy, but yesterday's news is already five weeks old. It feels like, because today is so different. So I hate I when guess, people like, don't have a sense of, yeah, I guess just general compassion. It, it's so intense. Everyone's energy is, I, and I understand why it is so heightened, but it seems some people are just so, I mean, maybe this is just specifically what I've been seeing like online because the internet is so mean, but whoa, it'd be crazy yeah, out there. I don't know. Like, I, I guess it goes both ways because then on the flip side, there have been people that I've seen that do have audiences saying things that are not <laughs> in line with the state of the world. And what, that was it? Oh, really was it just the Vanessa Hudgens thing? No, I mean, oh. she's a good example, but no, this is someone that's actually like more in the Toronto circle, like someone that, I mean, I would never call anyone out, but it was just, it was such an uneducated comment. And she basically was just saying that, you know, all's well. And it, it was, just, and this was yesterday. It's like, can you just maybe open a link on your computer? And, and, and that's what bugs me because that could be reaching, let's say, who knows, 40 to a hundred thousand eyeballs. And then, then we start all over again, trying to educate people on how severe this is and how much we have to take, um, you know, we, we have to understand the severity of the whole situation. But no, I mean, it is crazy. Yeah, Vanessa Hudgens, great example. Like what? You have a massive audience. You need to make sure that the message you're spreading is in, at least in line with the truth. I don't care if you have an opinion about the truth, but it has to be in line with the truth. Well, I think, yeah, in that situation, it was a case of just like, yeah, she was maybe uneducated on the severity of it and i think it's easy for certain people maybe if they are in certain bubbles to kind of you know be in that bubble and maybe not hear other outside sources so i mean it's also crazy too on the flip side like i i, I agree i think she shouldn't have said what she said and it, it came across as very tone deaf but also on the flip side it's so crazy how quick the internet is be like you fucking horrible person delete your life and you're like Okay, again, yeah. there's one way to like approach it. She did come back and she apologized for it, which I, I think is appreciated, but yeah. Yeah, but I agree. People definitely need to be more conscious of I mean, it get definitely goes back to just like the cancel culture. It's definitely a time of yeah. like, you know, watch what you're saying. Well, that's something everyone isn't like and you don't know everyone's individual situation. Like, I mean, like it's so crazy. Like you read all these different stories of Oh my God, like you talk about the vulnerable being, whether it's like 80 plus or really young children, but it's like, I'm this 24 year old, seemingly healthy person, but I have this underlying lung condition that no one knows about. So I'm super scared right now. And it's super, um, it, it's literally a threat to my life when I see my friends being reckless and, and still like going out, like people are still going out and like partying and going to bars. And it's like, Wait, you, that sounded like you were talking in first person. You don't mean you have an underlying lung condition. No, you just no, mean sorry. I was, it, I, it's been called out in yeah, the past 20 sorry. something. You're I like, when my friends go out, I'm like, Jacqueline, I'm No, 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 sure. sorry. I was kind of like quoting what she was, this girl was saying. You're right. If, got uh, it, not got me. It. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. But um, right. that's the thing. It's like, there are so many people, or you don't know like someone's living situation. Like what if they like live with their grip? Like it's, it's beyond just yourself and the measures that we're taking are, not because we're panicking it's to be preventative and it's really a positive yeah. thing and it, we just need to enforce it like we just need to do it and it's, it's true it's been like a really 50 50 divide i think in some circumstances it's brought out the absolute worst in people in in the sense that they've gone silent they're not educating themselves they don't care they're putting blinders on and then the other 50 percent have been so wonderful people really trying to support small businesses i was like crying last night reading this thing about um uh, this gym in Toronto and how like all of its members had band together to basically continue to pay their membership fees to keep the gym afloat um, Like during this time. Yeah, and it, it's like it's like so much of society is phenomenal and doing amazing things like that and and you know donating money and doing whatever they can to support um, did you yeah, see businesses did you see that um a lot of gyms are doing like live stream classes which is super cool like, yeah i saw barry's boot camp yeah, was doing that. Same. Yeah. i saw that and even like lyft is doing some some type of live stream thing where right. it's kind of interesting to see how quick 
Like it really is actually beautiful and fascinating to see how totally. quickly they adapt. Like, and yeah. even in this case of, I know we were chatting about some friends and I was actually talking on FaceTime to uh, my cousin who's in Manchester, England, and it's not quite as severe as, as it is here in like North America right now. But even they were saying like, yep, I have to take home my full Dell desktop computer. I'm taking it home on like the, the train and like- Yeah, I told you Kenzie yeah, did that, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, I know, I know, it's so funny. And it's just like, you just like make the changes and we really are, I mean, yeah. like it's, it's kind of beautiful to see how proactive and how quickly the changes are getting implemented. Yeah, and it's also, true, it forces you to be so creative too. Like when, when in another time ever, honestly, would we have been like, hey, let's set up cameras on different couches on different well, scenarios. Yeah, like, I'm saying, even this situation, like I think I was originally like, hey, maybe I'll just shoot a solo podcast. Or cause at first we're like, hey, maybe do you want to come to mine? And we're like, you know what? No, we really shouldn't like, be be in contact with each other right um, and then it turns into okay well maybe i'll just film a solo episode and then next week i'm assuming this will still be the same situation you'll film a solo episode and then you had this great idea where you're like well why don't we just call into each other and then i'm like oh my god we're gonna do a split screen like quarantine on the couch like podcast yeah and then this was even funny. birth so no, exactly. You get innovative, you get crafty and it's also so funny. I saw this hilarious tweet that was so true and it was like Ah, this time has taught us that a lot of these in-person meetings can be done on the phone. And I'm like, yes, thank it's you. It's so true. It's so true. But um, I guess like the weird part will be what we're day, I guess this is day four kind of, of like the full on Toronto shutdown. Like since I guess Friday is when things started to go really south. Um, well, yeah, day four ish. I feel like what'll be interesting is day 14. You know what I mean? Like, like I think the beginning stages are always a little easier because you're like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm at home. I'm figuring it out. I'm going through the motions. But I mean, I know personally, and Adam and I were talking about this on FaceTime last night, there's never a day really where I don't leave my house for at least one circumstance. Like whether that's, you know, a meeting or, you know, picking up food or whatever it might be. It's like, there, or a social interaction. So it's really strange. Like yesterday, I legitimately did not walk out the door of my house. I just, just survived. And I just and feel as like you should. Good job. You're a good Samaritan, my boo. Class for you. But Trying no, I, to be. I know what you're saying though. It is. Well, I, I was actually thinking like, there are so many things in a daily that I don't even necessarily acknowledge that like help my mental health, whether it's going to the gym and what, I, and the thing is, especially in our jobs, we, inherently have kind of anti-social jobs despite us being social media yeah. in that world um but because really we don't need to interact with someone it's not like a lot of other people who are working from home right now who are doing skype group like meetings and google yeah. hangout meetings and still at least talking to people like luckily i've been facetiming the heck out of all my friends and family over these past couple of days but yeah. we really don't on our work front have a reason to be talking to anyone so when you're at home and you're in the same situation that i am we're both living alone like it's not like we have a spouse that lives with us or anything like that or a roommate yeah so we truly are alone all day and i don't yeah. think that i acknowledge all of these things necessarily that truly help my mental health and like i feel really lucky i'm in a good place now but there's been times when i'm, I'm not and i know that these certain daily things that i need to do that make me feel mentally better one thing my biggest thing i'm so like weather affected and like light affected thank is, god it's been nice apparently yeah. it's been rainy as hell in la i was oh, facetiming madison the other day yeah and she's like the fact that i can't leave and then the fact that the weather is terrible on top of it it's like just awful no that's what i'm saying like yeah, so, so you think of all these little things like, okay, me going on at least one walk or one run outside a day, like that helps my mental health. Yeah. And then, or me having one social interaction that's unrelated to work, whether it's meeting up with a friend or grabbing a coffee or whatever, like that helps me. And especially like the nature of our job. So you think of all these little things on the daily that I don't even necessarily think about, which is such a huge privilege to be able to do. And now when it's like, I guess, taken away, even just for, again, we're only on day four. Like this is, this is nothing. This sh we should be chilling. I'm like, yeah. oh no. Like I wonder people who have much more, people who are truly dealing with mental health issues that can't even go out to see their therapist right now that I know like, you don't know all the, it's like, it's crazy how on an individual level, sure we can be okay and we're not going to die. We don't have a food shortage, but we really do rely on each other as a society. And I think that's what this time is showing us for our general happiness. Totally. And as yeah, much no, as people love to play the like, oh my God, I'm antisocial anyways. Like this is like, it's like, no, like, I mean, well, yes, it depends on your personality type, but also <laughs> we do, whether you're this antisocial person or not, there are small moments, whether it's you going out to the grocery store or whatever that are part of your life that we've become so accustomed to, you know? Oh, 100%. Yeah. How are you feeling? I, 
I, f I feel fine. I mean, I honestly, at this stage in day four, don't feel affected. I will say, like, the close friend group, I don't feel like, and this this has been a, a, a topic of debate on, on, I've seen a lot of, like, news shows and, and um, yeah. just things that I've been watching, and, like, the question is, like, do you close off your main immediate circle of family and friends during this time? And I feel like that's a really, yeah, I think that's a really tough question. It's like, I know that you and I, for example, are not the, we are not the target of protection. Like we are the people that can be carrying this that can then affect the people that would be, that we're trying to obviously Yeah, we're protect. prime carriers, but we're not gonna even know it. Exactly, and, and I was reading actually, um, I'm sure a lot of our audience would be aware because she's quite popular in the US, but Something Navy, who's like a very popular blogger, put out a statement today um, saying that she in fact actually just tested positive for COVID-19. Oh. Wait, was this the girl that you were telling me like a blogger a week ago that you thought had it or something? Was this uh, the same Meg, girl or no? Meg had mentioned it, yeah, yeah. When, oh when wait, Meg so she actually does it. have it? So yeah, so she tested oh, no. positive for it. And it was really interesting because she kind of walked through like her symptoms and she said, look, for everyone, it's going to be different. Um, but she's so it started out with just a really sort of sore, dry throat, which then turned into like a really sore throat. Like, you know, when you're about to get sick and you're like, oh, my throat like kills. And then she said after that stage, it kind of turned into like a bad cough and then into like a sinus headache. And then she's like, now I'm basically in the worst stage of it where like my skin and like body hurts. Like I'm in like body aches. Um, and so she's been taking just Tylenol extra strength. And she said, but obviously as soon as that wears off, I'm in pain again. Um, however, she has said, or like did mention no, um, you know, need of being hospitalized, which I think is interesting considering her age. I mean, she's probably she? mid thirties, okay. I would say. And so she so, does, sorry, doesn't need to be hospitalized? Well, well, up until this point, like, she didn't mention, uh, obviously, that she's been in and out of the hospital. She just mentioned, you know, I'm at home, I'm resting, I'm self-isolating. A lot of people uh, have been having difficulty, especially in this, is she from the States? Yeah, U.S. Yeah, even New getting York. access to testing, which is, like, so crazy. People that think they have it and yeah. have the symptoms, so it's yeah. so sad. I guess it's just a reminder for the people that could be carriers but like would obviously potentially survive it like people like her where she's like healthy and and young yeah. um it's like okay that's exactly the problem because okay so she has it right now and she made a comment in her in her little blurb saying you know obviously now i have to reinform the last two weeks like 14 days of people that i've been in contact with and that's where it gets tricky it's like yeah she might be okay but what happens if like she visited her grandmother like a week ago or if she you know you never know so i guess i don't know it's just that's a very real scenario of you have to be aware of who you're interacting with but i guess to my point i've just been very weary of the people i've interacted with to make sure that no one that i've even seen in the last like five I would say at least five days, yeah, could be, I mean, at least to my knowledge, um, like in a, in, in a severe, like no one had severe health concerns or anything like that. So, and, and we've said this ourselves, like I've seen you, it's like, okay, but if you have it, then I have it, but that's okay. It's just, we can't see, you know, our parents or our grandparents yeah. or, yeah, yeah. Also, random note, uh, hey, do you want to take me off your thigh or your couch just so I can actually see you on FaceTime? Oh yeah, sorry. I took my I took my case off this morning. Here, guys, you can see Jacqueline in the. Here's Hi, Tori. Say hello. Wait, there you go. Oh, that's too funny. Um, yeah. Um, let me just turn the camera here. I'll lean you yeah. up against. No, it's, it's okay. It's just nicer to see you than than the couch. Um, but no, right. I I totally agree. And I mean, we were chatting about this obviously offline beforehand too. Um, oh my God, remind me after an email just came through on my phone. Remind me peanuts, like peanut butter. Remind me that after. Okay. <laughs> Remind me of peanut butter? Okay. Uh, um, and uh, out of anyone, like in society, we are the prime carriers because we're the type of people, we're very yeah. social. Like, you know, what was that book we were talking about where it kind of tells people's roles in society? And like, I'm like, you are the social connector. Like you have mm. so, and like, and I'm the same way. Like I have so many different groups of friends, different like work people. Like we see so many people in a day, whether the nature of our jobs and our lives and how we are like socially. So totally. we are prime, like we would be the prime candidate to literally infect the entire like community, which is like horrible. I know. So we especially need to be conscious of what we're exactly. doing. Like I think of someone like, 
I don't know, like, I think of someone like my brother. He has his circle of friends, he has his routine, but he doesn't but really stray. Well, he also yeah. doesn't stray necessarily from his routine. Whereas us, I'm trying out this new workout today, then I'm going to this, and I'm gonna take the subway and go to this new experience, and then try, yeah. like, then I'm gonna, like, so we are literally going around the city and, like, manually as one person spreading it, let alone take, like, spreading it to, to other people. So, especially people like us or people who also have busy lifestyles who are watching, um, it, it is it is a social responsibility and as much who's the who's the really like savage oh i'm blanking on his name i don't actually follow him but i know he's like very popular online he does kind of like um i don't know like Brock. like like rants like but Bretman just like Rock? is that who it is okay. i don't know what it was the stripper pool and does cereal of the day because i love bretman if that's who you're talking about oh okay i don't know i'll have to look after but anyways one of these like hilarious like la type you know vlogger whatever you want to call him he just did the most hilarious but again like to your point not compassionate at all and it was very much just like him swearing and like freaking out and being like just stay inside like he was like oh, just like losing something. his mind well that's the thing and i think don't get me wrong like i'm the first like there's been some hilarious jokes out there cry, like and i'm someone like i enjoy dark humor i think it's fine till or not i fine. mean the internet has like kept me laughing i well, have that's to what say I'm saying. there's been some hilarious stuff and i appreciate like even someone like bretman rock if that's who it is someone yeah. can confirm if that's what he posted or not but like he is such a character and that's and it's he's getting his point across in his style and that's so funny i'm talking more about like the people who don't have compassion who are like i saw this like you'll see posts or tweets or other people saying stories about like ranting and they would be saying things like, I saw this one girl walk, walking on the sidewalk today. Like, what a fucking disgrace. Like, she's so fat, killing society. It's like, hey, you have no idea. There are still some jobs that are not doing paid or unpaid yeah. time off. Like, you don't know yeah. someone's social responsibility or, like, even health status. Like, it's a, like some people have to go out on walks, like, if they're dealing with, you know, type 2 diabetes and they need to keep their insulin levels in check and they need totally. to do some physical work. At, like, it's or just even like, like the people judgment. with dogs like my yeah. sister was like i feel like people have been judgy she's like been staying completely in her condo but she's like obviously i have to walk my dog to a certain extent well, like, and, and according to um who like the world health organization and like canada.org i think it is or canada whatever the canadian website that's giving like official updates like yeah. not the news sources um currently as of today they are saying you can still you can as an individual they said recommended no more than three but encouraged alone um, you can go out for a walk or a jog by yourself. Obviously not touching slash horking on the sidewalk or the least spreading. For sure. And also your dogs. You can walk your dogs. But again, be conscious of being at least two meters or six feet away from other people. And, right. And like, that's the reality. Like, if you have a dog, you have to walk it. I'm pretty sure it's confirmed that dogs can't be carriers and can't catch it. Um, but yeah, it's just yeah. like, you've got to do your best in each situation and just hope that most people are like if you see someone before just like going off on them of course educate someone if you feel like they need to know but like also have compassion like and compassion to all of these oh my god it's been so crazy so i know um i had mentioned something to you about how i believe it was in italy don't quote me if i'm wrong but um in italy they had bumped up the final exams of a lot of their medical students and nurses that way they could be like fully certified and have all the right certificates in place to fully go in and help you know help tackle the hospitals because they're understaffed and there's not going to be enough um and i think this is happening in other places as well because you had said something even who was it well yeah you had a friend or something friend who, in ireland oh, and she okay, wrote yeah. it early so i mean i don't know I don't know what's happening, but I also know that I've seen bloggers in the UK saying they're going about life as normal. So I don't. Wait, really? This is, what I, this is what I don't understand. It's like I don't understand how in some parts of the world, like well, I, the thing I is, love that in North America, or and specifically in the US, like we are just like we're gonna tackle this and we're gonna do it early and we're gonna try and be on top of it as much as we can. And this girl literally, I quote, said. Well, in the UK, they just want everyone to catch it so that we basically become immune to it. And then when it comes back in 10 years, we'll all be able to fight it. Literally, end quote. And I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not a know? doctor, but I think they're working on immunization and that's what I'll be taking. I won't be catching it from my for neighbor. For sure, for sure. And that's what I'm saying. And, and that's great that you think we should all catch it and then fight it. But that's clearly not a reality for some people well, so i also think well one it's important like the reason like let, let's not be fooled like the reason america especially is being so proactive is because it is actually amplified and i'm not saying this to scare our audience but actually three weeks ahead of what we currently think it is like it's 10 times worse than what we think it is and yeah. because of certain people in politics 
they have not been proactive about it until it's yeah. kind of not too late and a devast like I don't mean like in a doomsday kind of way, but too late and like this should have been dealt with a month ago, Tackled, month and a yeah. half ago, or taken seriously and been. Like, I think it's taken Trump until yesterday to say that it was a serious situation. Because before, it's like, no, it's no big deal. It's like the flu. And you're like, what? Yeah, like, he sir? finally, I think, yeah, yesterday. It's also just before. so, I, I cannot imagine what it feels like to be someone who has it or someone who's vulnerable to be seeing I know. your president saying that. It's just, like, truly so, like, hurtful. Um, yeah. And divides the nation. Like, it's just not, not the move, uh, Mr. President. But, um, uh, where was I going with that? Oh, but something also to be, like... Um, aware of is it is what's so fascinating about this is the way it is currently it's not like um in the past when there's been other diseases and viruses that have spread super quickly it's been slow and widespread and across like way more countries than are currently affected right now with corona whereas in this current situation as it stands right now is there's only a few major epicenters and major like countries that are in i mean it's definitely classified as a global pandemic don't be confused that's what the who put out but also the actual cases aren't present in a lot of countries so some pl like places right now italy is now the current biggest place with I'm, i actually don't know what's next i'm assuming america but um but that's what's also so interesting because you yeah might have a blogger from like russia that has zero cases zero deaths like they're like what's going on everyone chill out and then we're like bro you don't even know what we're dealing with over you know so it's mm -hmm. like it's hard to communicate it unless you're there and it's like what italy was saying because italy's been like bro we've been telling you like we told you this three weeks ago get it under control but now you only care because like because you only, you're affected. Well, you only care because you're being reactive now versus proactive. And that's the whole thing. It's like totally. with medical care, medical care is supposed to be, it's supposed to be proactive versus reactive. You know, like it's like, yeah. don't wait till it gets bad to fix it. But I mean, I'm no one to speak like I, huge shout out to everyone that's been, whether you're a nurse, doctor, I saw these posts about people like sleeping in the, like literally in these overcrowded hallways, sleeping on anything they can because they've been there for like 72 hours straight. It's insane. Like we would not be doing as okay as we're doing. Like we would be 10 times worse if it wasn't for those amazing people in the medical field. So shout out to them. And totally. um, we really, we it, there's times like this that really make you so grateful for people who, and like who dedicate their them. lives to helping other people. Yeah, and beyond them, also acknowledging everyone that supports the supply chain. Like, we literally would be dead if we didn't have goods moving across borders and truckers bringing things back and forth. Um, and they already live such isolated lives. And I, I don't know, I feel like th there has been a lot of, pre of appreciation going towards the health um, institutes and, and obviously doctors and nurses which is so well deserved but I think people are forgetting that it goes beyond them because so many other people are still working like even in Metro yesterday um, All in our grocery stores workers. yeah yeah like and the guy was like in the meat section he's like yeah I'm the last one here and I'm like oh my god it's like so sad and they could just quit at, the, at a flick of a dime it's up to them to decide whether they want to be helping or not this time also really shows you where you want to spend your money as a consumer and yeah. <laughs> again I saw another hilarious tweet where someone was saying when I am in a future job interview, I'm going to ask my employer, how did you react to COVID-19? Because it really shows you. So it's times like this where you see companies, I believe, believe the list that I was reading as of a few days ago, I'm sure it's more now. It was like Lush, Urban Outfitters. Um, now I'm blanking on the rest of them. But there was a list of, of uh, retail stores that were fully paying their employees for their yeah, at least 14. Fresh is doing that. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, my team at Fresh. Fresh is great. Yeah, um, but it really does show you companies who. It's like you are a huge corporation. Of oh, course, no, not Fresh Foods. Sorry, oh. Fresh like beauty. Oh, oh, I was yeah. thinking Fresh the restaurant. I, I was like my team. I was like what? No, no, I thought you meant Fresh. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about local places. Um, no, no, no. That oh. like the beauty company. I saw that they put a post out the same. Like they're willing to support and pay all the retail workers. Yeah, yeah. And they're paying them not even on a limited 14 days. Like, we will pay you for your scheduled hours indefinitely, which I thought that was, like, incredible. Wait, do we have a fresh freestanding store here in Canada? I've never not seen one. Not in Canada. One. There's there's tons of stores throughout New York City. There's flagships, like, across the Tell U.S. Tell me why I've yeah. never been to one. That's crazy. Um, yeah. But, no, it really it is. It's times like this. Like, I 
no a bunch of retail workers like the mall is still open it's like i'm sorry the I mall know. is not an essential place like that's crazy and then all again majority of these workers are young gen what are we gen x are we z. gen x gen z z jeez <laughs> uneducated here um but no all of these gen z employees young people who are in a lot of big public places who have a lot of big big circles of people like oh my god and they and but they can't they can't take time off because they still have to pay their rent you see places like italy that have been so incredible and they have been literally postponing mortgage payments rent payments utility bills are not enough like and and that's really what shows you like the humanity in the world because there's these huge companies and corporations that get so greedy and they're like well we can't take this like hit this loss it's like you out of anyone has to take the hit like yeah. these individuals cannot afford to yeah. and it, it really is sad when you see people have you gotten companies have you gotten emails from like your homeowner um like from your building yet have they helped in any way or no no okay i've gotten emails which is really nice like literally the home yeah, saying you don't have to pay yeah like homeowners association like basically saying like if you want to delay any payments or if you like super oh. nice and they're like because as a like because of our my email. Be, i guess um i mean mm. my building has my building been, doesn't love me well no but my building has been around a long time and they were specifically saying because because we're an older building and because they've had um like savings as a as a homeowners association they have all this cash on hand to like help the home homeowners and i go, i was reading it last night and i was like that's insane like that is so nice like who knows the what people's email. situations are no totally the only email i got was the gym is closed don't go to it <laughs> <laughs> i mean who knows if it gets worse you might end up getting emails but i thought that was really nice that they've already outreached to the homeowners and 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 tried to put something in place but I mean, yeah. It's, it's just it's just being human in times like this. Like it, it's times like this where you're not hoarding food, you're not stockpiling. That's unnecessary yeah. and actually hurts people who can't afford it. Or, like can't afford to be buying things out at that rate. Yeah. Who need it on a weekly basis. Totally. And it's yeah. It's just times like this where you just have to. It comes back to just being a good human and being yeah. a good person. I also and, think like, like just understanding your situation. Don't be an and, asshole. Yeah. You know? And like lining it up to other people's. I think, um, like I, I just feel like insanely honestly privileged in this moment in the sense that I was reading so many uh, I put a little thing out yesterday being like how's everyone feeling and like literally 95% of the messages were so sad and it was just like oh I'm so sad like I'm not going to get a prom oh I'm so sad I was in my final year of university I'm not going to be able to um, graduate with my class like and these are like small little things like, however, but like moments, milestones. However, milestones that I've already been through and already experienced and I feel like that's so sad to think that so many people aren't gonna have those like special moments beyond obviously the health concerns yeah, and everything of course of course this the is just like the more like true to life day-to-day -day for people and um yeah there was just so many quotes like that like people were like oh my wedding is supposed to be in two weeks and like oh yeah, my the weddings i didn't even I think the weddings is crazy like these poor people that have spent literally like years planning this thing so much money lost for these individuals like it's, it's, it's so insane. sad it really is and like a lot of people, the question has been, is it to delay or to cancel? And a lot of people have just been having to cancel because there's really no end date we have in mind right now I for know. this. So, like, could you imagine them rescheduling and you're like, oh, bumped again. The pandemic is still thriving. Like, Adam it's and like, I were it's... laughing because he said before it kind of got bad last week. Um, oh, no, when was this? I guess it was like four days ago, three or four days ago. Um, he went running into the Eaton Center, which is like our main mall in Toronto. Oh, yeah. He had to go to soft mall. Yeah, he had this. to return a pair of shoes because obviously like things we assumed were going to be closing and there was like a expiration on it, whatever. And he said he saw this cute guy, not cute as in like he thought he was attractive, just cute as in like it was cute, the scenario, because he was standing there buying di like a diamond ring. And it's like, really? Like at a time like this? But like, I mean, you know, you never know. Like maybe it's just trying to find the silver lining. People again. And, totally. Yeah. Well, it's like everyone's been saying there's going to be like now a baby boom in nine months. Oh, 100%. All, I'm and, very much aligned with and that. And the flip side of that, like you see so many people who are posting. They're like, I can't work from home with my with my spouse. We're like losing it. It's like, oh, bro, yeah. I don't think you have a good relationship. I hate to break this to you. Like if you can't spend time in your house with your significant other, like something's I mean, wrong. I, I mean, need to be the one. To be fair, like I get it. Like, and you know why I get it? I get it in a condo setting. I always think to myself, it's very different. Like when you're more settled and you're older and you have um, a house, let's put it that way. I'll just use my parents as an example. Like there could be half a day where like my mom is in 
a totally separate room or like my dad's in his office and it's not as if you're on top of each other I've even had scenarios and I don't even live with Adam but there's been scenarios where it's just like someone is glomming onto you and you're like trying to do something and you're like I absolutely cannot accomplish anything that's me I think I'm that person I'm such a sloth I'm like don't I know I know and there's and I'm not a sloth so I feel like when people are like that and I'm not like that like I know I need my space sometimes in that way to like get things done so I get it like if, if Adam and I were both working from home like sitting here doing things like I don't know I I could see that it could go oh really awry. yeah for sure oh, I'm like oh a, a human I, I kind of appreciate the energy but I mean no, I appreciate the energy but just not for 14 days in a row unsolicited like uninterrupted that's funny <laughs> yeah would you prefer that would you rather here's a good question would you rather be alone for 14 days or stuck with someone for 14 days I'd definitely rather have the person yeah I think I guess I'd rather be stuck with that I would definitely rather be stuck with Adam but um have you guys you guys have still been seeing each other IRL right yeah Adam and I think it's like he's gonna other. catch it you're gonna catch it like yeah but he's, it's the fact that you don't spread that circle bigger he's super like nervous about the whole thing and I think I think anyone that has any level of like health anxiety or um like is just you know more nervous about that kind of stuff is going through like a hard time just because you end up with like this pit of anxiety and you don't really know, know. what to do with it well that's what i'm saying it's times like this where you just are like i feel so personally like i i do really feel so lucky it goes back to what you say like the, the privilege of it i totally recognize that well one i'm lucky i don't struggle with anxiety or health anxiety yeah. so of course it's be informed be proactive be educated but don't panic yeah and um and like someone can say that to me i'm like oh yeah true and i can just like do it and feel okay like i'm not totally you know and again but again it's privilege because i'm not worried about I, I mean there are such people in my life that i am worried about but it's it's not something that is debilitating to me and Again, because of our jobs, I am out of any, I bet you out of anyone in Toronto right now who is a working human, I am probably one of the least affected people ever. Cause I can, I don't have to change my, I work from home all the time anyways. I don't have to change anything. It's just me in here. Like, again, I am the least affected by this yeah. pandemic. So how lucky that I don't have to carry the burden and the stress that so many other people are experiencing. And that's why I guess it's like times like this, it's just a good reminder. Again, be human and extend that helping hand totally. where you can because People are dealing with so much right now. Wow. Retweet. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Should we, uh, not to just push all the corona aside, um, I feel like everyone, this is on every single, you can't go anywhere on the internet or watch any podcast and not hear about it, which I think is important. We do need to all be educated and chatting about it. Yeah. But I think we should um, move on to uh, to other things and, and keep things light and hopefully provide us distractions. So... Corona, we done talking about you today. <laughs> um, it's also the like, what do I even talk about? Because I've had nothing in my life for the last. Yeah, what? Week. What have you been up to? Like, what do you do? Do you um, shoot videos at home? You just are you yeah, working out at home or you're running? Well, to be fair, yeah, life doesn't feel too much different. Like normally, like my average nine to five is literally either filming or editing from home. So that hasn't really changed. It's just more like yeah from like dinner plans onward to evening i would normally be meeting up with someone or hanging out or being social so that's the only part or like working out or something like at a public place so that's the only thing that's really changed the majority of my day honestly still feels the same it's just more now that you have the choice removed it's like now that i know i can't leave i want to leave you know <laughs> but um yeah. but no it's really nice it, again times like this where you like rediscover old passions i was actually um drawing like i used to be really i mean it makes sense i'm into makeup and artistry and stuff like that but like i used to really love sketching and drawing and i don't it's hard my mindset now which is like super unhealthy it's like i'd rather just be doing a makeup look or doing something that's productive and, and goes to my business versus oh i'm just gonna draw just for fun yeah so i don't really draw as much anymore but i actually pulled out my sketchbook and i was going through it it's so funny because i have like my literal first sketches from like when i was in grade eight and nine you're like whoa i sucked but then you're like oh progress right um so i was drawing and <laughs> oh, doing some like progress. charcoal drawings and stuff which is really nice and then just some like pencil like graphite drawings and oh that's like, nice. oh, that's fun but i think i want to do some painting i don't paint very often anymore i want to paint I've got plans to bake. I've got some ingredients and I've got puzzles galore. So like, really? I feel like I'm kind of thriving. So, <laughs> so <laughs> what about you? What's been on the agenda? Yeah. I feel like for you, you're, you're, you're really 
you're more affected than me. Yeah, I mean, yes and no. Like, it's been okay so far. I mean, I just did my, like, workout from home yesterday, which was fine. I guess it makes you realize, like, all the things you never thought you could do. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, oh, I can literally just roll out a mat and put it on my carpet and do a full-on workout and like I guess there's like more opportunities <laughs> yeah, I always like, you didn't know you could do that it's not that I didn't know I could do it but no we have the luxury of going to places but I'm always it. just I like I, I overcomplicate my life in some ways I've realized like I yeah. will you know go to the ends of the earth to you know order food or go to the furthest restaurant or do whatever and it's like mm, I could just toast this and I can eat it and that's it like it's just like funny I'm like okay back to basics I've never cooked I like more. it yeah it, it like strips it down yeah you're like okay what can I do like yeah well, but it's fine you know you know my biggest thing in life I like efficiency just mmm major chef's kiss to that yeah. like I hate the idea I will most most of the time be like no I'm not doing an in-person meeting let's make it a phone meeting because then there's an extra hour out of my day getting ready going there coming back like and that's it's not worth it it's not life or death like it's gonna be okay yeah so I'm someone like I much prefer these strip back simplicity I am way more especially now with like I'd say in the past year I've been way more selective with my time and where I choose to spend it yeah which is an active choice I've made like on a personal level like not even like as a business decision and it's I found it really healthy and, and good for me and I appreciate it and so it's times like this where I'm like, I am the most efficient I've ever been. Cause now I don't have any obligations that I had to run out to or go to and like get done up for. And like, I can just, I, I'm in work mode right now and not in an overwhelming, like burnout crazy. I'm gonna kill myself. Like, it's not like that. It's just like, I am just getting things done. I've got no distractions. I've got, yeah. and I'm very good at like, it depends again on your personality type. I'm very much so someone that is like an independent worker and like, I don't need someone to like, motivate me to do things like I'll just do it yeah so I've been I've been feeling good I finally went through all I mean you've been knowing that you've known this for a while I was looking to hire someone I finally got the process of that all figured out and did all my phone interviews and got yeah. everything done so that was a good thing I got had time to get sorted and now I'm like on top of my video schedule which is so good because I always feel like I'm scrambling to meet my like posting days yeah and so yeah I'm like feeling good Chilling. and again we have the could you imagine if this happened even like you know 20 years ago to this scale when there isn't FaceTime and and it's so different. Whereas we have so many different ways, thanks to the internet, to feel socially connected. Yeah. But even right now, I'm not with you in a podcast studio, but guess what? Hey, we're still doing the thing. We're having the conversation we would be having. Yeah. And we're so lucky with FaceTime, even FaceTiming my cousin, who's all the way in England right now. You feel, it's a, it's a false sense of having real social interaction, but it still counts as social interaction, you know? Yeah, it still Even works. though I'm just looking on a screen to you and is I can't she physically coming, like is she coming home no she's not oh wow I'm the shocked. reality is did really you, well yeah did you she, see Trudeau's speech? where she lives though no yeah. Trudeau's speech really got me he looked into the camera this is what he did he looked into the camera and he goes let me be clear Canadians if you are abroad it is now time to come home that's what he did and I was like that hit me I was like oh my god yeah, that's, I think, more for, like, trap. Like, the thing is, like, that's her home. She lives in England. She has her health care. She has insurance. Like, that's her, where she lives. Hmm. Um, so, I, I think it's more for, like, travelers who are abroad, who are planning to return in the near future. But she she's not concerned. But, I mean, it definitely was a conversation. She's like, yeah, like, she was even sharing that, like, someone in her family was like, hey, maybe you should come home, blah, blah, blah. But she's like, you know what? We feel comfortable right now to stay. So, it's one of those things, again, you kind of got to play it by ear. Yeah. Jeez. Like, but how do we get back talking about Corona? No, it's more just like the closing of the borders. It's not even really about the virus. It's just like, like if you were traveling right now, what would you do? Oh, if I was traveling, I would fully come home. Yeah. That's what I'm saying to her. Like she's not, tra she lives in England. That's her home. It's like, yeah. But then my grandparents who vacation part time, in the in the states they're coming home because they don't want to get stuck there right, beyond what right. they like, you know so yeah i know it's um did you hear today there was like word that they're probably closing the border to the americans which thank god they should so yeah, no i'm i kudos like that should be happening we should all be like freeze yeah totally freeze, i mean know? they're gonna make exceptions obviously for you know like i said truck workers and everyone that has to be crossing the borders health officials anyone like that but and they even said snowbirds people that have to get home so. yeah well that's literally my grandparents yeah. like but um crazy yeah no i would appreciate i mean obviously this is all all of us <laughs> not fully anecdotal but us just you know 
a gal with Google. So um, if you guys have any thoughts or actual um, informed, um, not even opinions, but like let us know if you have any comments on this. If you work in the healthcare, healthcare field, I would love to hear what your experience has been so far and, and, and share your stories. I, I think it's, I think yeah. again, this is a time where we need to feel community through other people's, whether it's stories or, or posts or whatever. Like it is comforting to hear whether good or bad stories. Yeah. Um, so I would love to hear from you guys listening if you feel comfortable sharing anything. Like I, I would love to hear your thoughts and what your situation has been, where you're from and what's going on. And yeah, um, and it's stop, the one thing that we have. the online bullying, yeah. <laughs> and don't be a bully. I don't think our I don't think our potty talk listeners are bullies. No, not a no, not on potty talk. Someone responded like to my story shit. yesterday though. It was so funny. She was like what? she was like Ontario is under emergency, not Toronto. And I was like, sorry ma'am, what are you talking about? Obviously I understand that. I'm saying Toronto is a city that I live in, <laughs> like not Ontario as a whole, of course. I respect that and understand that. I was like, why do people need to like nitpick at things that are literally such a waste of time. No, I used to tell myself, I used to tell myself, hey, people that comment annoying things, like not even haters, but just like people that comment annoying things. It's not even them being haters, just people being straight up annoying. Yeah. I used to be like, oh, you know what? Like, no, it doesn't bother me. Like, it's fine. Like, I got thick skin. Like, no one can touch me. No, people drive me nuts. And yeah. it's like, I have to make the conscious effort to be like, Jacqueline, not worth replying. It doesn't matter. You don't know if that, again, person is 10 years old. You don't know if that's a 25 year old. Like, you don't know the internet. No, she was like a 35 year old woman. I'm like, why? That's the, yeah. Why? And then you go to their bio and they're like, preach love, like, spread love and kindness. You're like, live, laugh, uh, shut up. Like, people are so annoying. Yeah. So, that's wild. It takes, it, no, it does take major efforts on my end these days because people just be saying the craziest things and I do not want to engage, but. Mm, sometimes I still see it. I try not to see it, and I see I it. I'm like, calm down. Like, it's just, it's unfortunate when everyone feels like they have the right to scream out their opinion. Yeah. An opinion can be based on no fact or no merit. Totally. And it's just, people love to be loud, you know? Don't they? But that's life. That's <laughs> life. <laughs> All right, Anyways. should we hit some roses and thorns? Yeah, are we, have we done a full, I guess we have done Let's, a full episode. Yeah. Let us know down below how you like our quarantine and pod episode. <laughs> Um, hopefully, I know the audio is not going to be great. Well, this was the funniest thing um, to everyone listening, so you guys understand. So it's not necessarily the studio that, I mean, we obviously appreciate filming in a studio. It keeps things looking professional. We love our studio. We love our fishbowl. Um, but we actually don't physically have the podcast gear here in our houses. It stays at the studio. So we use like lab mics and we have, um, what's it called? The a actual Zoom recorder. The Zoom, the Zoom recorder. Um, that records all the audio channels onto it. So we're literally just filming this like a YouTube style video. Like I just have my like little DSLR, my little like mounted um, mic on. So it's probably not gonna sound as great as our previous episodes, but bear with us as we all try to make things work during this uh, interesting time. Mm -hmm. But I think, I have hope. I don't think it's gonna sound awful. It's not gonna sound like the best, but I believe. High, high hopes for a living. You to turn that in that. <laughs> oh, we're all going That'll insane. sound good in the in the rough mics. <laughs> um, Tor, take it away. You go first this time. Roses and thorns, baby. I mean, thorn is pretty obvious. That <laughs> <It's like, laughs> <laughs> we need to talk about. <laughs> the thorn is uh, quite obvious. I'll just leave it at that. Um, the rose. Yeah, we just actually do three roses. We need like extra positivity. Love today. Just yeah, three roses. No okay. thorns. One rose is. I'm glad um, that we made a podcast. I feel like that's really good. Something about keeping to some sort of routine and all of this madness is important. So that's a rose. Another rose is, um, these Joe Fresh sweaters. Yeah, actually, yeah. These Joe Fresh sweaters They're are so super comfy cute, and very like, comfy, perfect for quarantine. Quarantine sweaters. <laughs> these quarantine Link down sweaters. Below. And then, a third rose or the rosebud. I think I'm gonna like take it outside today. I'm gonna be smart about it. I'm gonna drive to like the bluffs or like the beach and just um, do like a long walk and enjoy the outdoors. It's oh, a wow. sunny day. You're welcome Bluff. to quarantine walk with me. I mean, uh, only if we're two meters away. <laughs> isn't it six? Six feet? Six, I thought it was six feet. Six feet, two meters. Is that six the same feet? thing? Okay, yeah. I don't know my conversion. And I don't know. Um, yeah, so it's all good in the hood. Stunning. And what are you looking forward to, Rosebud? Um, I'm gonna film like a try on. Uh, I got some revolve dresses. 
a couple weeks ago for the Juno Awards, which never happened. So I'm gonna film that, <laughs> try them on and film that. Oh, sweet Lord. Um, Rose, I am looking forward to, I actually made a big old batch of some fire pasta with Beyond Me Crumble in it and like, looking for i made like two extra bowls now for tomorrow and the next day like i love i love i love leftover nice um so really loving myself for that um another rose is yeah actually kind of like loving this setup it took me again didn't have much time because i woke up and i was like oh i fell back asleep and like i was like freaked out for my dream and then i was like i just gotta set up the podcast like call tour and get this going and like i just did it so like love that um another rose is <laughs> doesn't honestly, that stress you out how do you wake up and that would just alarm me like no but i you know i just tell myself i'm awake and i just like was ready like i'm good oh my god the only thing i didn't get time to do my makeup which i was gonna do my makeup because like i haven't been wearing makeup and i was like oh I'll, I'll, I'll look cute for the pod for the potty listeners but i was like book it um but it's okay <laughs> um my other rose that leads me into my other rose i've been loving my skin lately um you know i always kind of had struggled with my skin and as of the past month things have just been i don't know who is looking over me i don't know like what's been happening what's been in my water uh, my skin's been really good. I'm nice. actually doing, I'm filming a series, like, uh, not a series, I'm filming this, like, really long video that's taking me, like, literally a month and a half to film, um, trying a bunch of different uh, specific type of skincare products. I don't want to spoil it, or I don't want anyone to steal the idea if this video doesn't come out soon. Yeah. Um, anyways, but, uh, so I've been doing some different things to my face, and, like, things have been going good, so nice. I'm really happy about that. The same products um, or, the, or the point is that you try different things? You'll just have to watch the video. That's oh, all I can say. Okay, got it. <laughs> I'll tell you off camera after. Um, in another <laughs> rosebud, I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to. Um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna. Do you follow Whitney Simmons on Instagram? No. Oh, you should follow Whitney Simmons. I think you'd like her. Um, she's like a gym shark, like fitness, like, but also kind of does some beauty stuff with like Tarte and like. She's like this cool like fitness gal, cool. um, American, and she just posted a bunch of like at home like leg and booty workouts. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll like try that today. Cute. Love that. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, this is the this at home pod. Fun. Yo, if this is if this is good, this is how we're gonna film every episode now. <laughs> we never have to see each other. <laughs> oh, Always at home. That's too funny. Um, thanks guys so much for watching. Thanks um, we're for sending watching. You a lot of love and light and hand sanitizer. <laughs> Love ya. <laughs> Hopefully Thanks, see you back in the fishbowl next week. <laughs> I don't know about that. Bye, guys. Know.